Uh, in the early 90s, uh, the Nordhofen 62 project uh, was conceived, and the first buyer was a gentleman uh, from uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, uh, by the name of George Tahia. Uh, and he allowed that project to, to commence, was the buyer of hull number one, and that boat was named Sumlaki. Uh, we delivered Sumlaki uh, on her own bottom from the factory in Taiwan over to Hong Kong, and later from Hong Kong down to Singapore, and on board for that trip were myself, Jim Leishman, and my son Trevor. Uh, it was a wonderful, glorious trip, and gave us a lot of, lot of great memories, and uh, 20 years later, fast forward, George's brother stepped forward, uh, Shagan, and I had met Shagan in the early 90s when, when Samlaki was delivered, and lovely guys, great family, and wonderful to do business with, and the boat that he ordered was, was Nordhofen 86, number 10, Kanuna. Uh, given that, that we had all had such a wonderful, life-changing experience delivering some Lockheed in the early 90s, uh, 21 years later, of course, I had to be aboard uh, the delivery of uh, Kanuna uh, uh, down to Singapore, which w we were ba basically replicating what happened uh, 21 years earlier. I didn't have enough time, unfortunately, to make uh, the entire trip, and I ended up uh, joining the boat uh, in Malaysia. And so I rode from Malaysia uh, down to Singapore with several stops uh, along the way. Once the yacht was in Hong Kong, we did some final sea trials, several little sea trials to test additional equipment. And then we had the full crew on board the yacht at this point, the chef, engineer, captain, stewardess, Doug, myself, and David Jen from the factory were on board. So once we were happy with everything, after more testing, we were ready to depart for Malaysia.
By the third day, we're off the coast of Vietnam. Weather is greatly improved. Seas have completely flattened out. The boat's handling great. Everyone's getting into their routines. Fishing lines are out. You know, into the evening, we've got a full moon. It's just ideal conditions for, for this point of the trip. I'm uh, Duncan, the uh, master of Kanuna. This is day four of our trip out of Hong Kong. We left on Monday. It's, uh, it's now Friday afternoon. And we're just, uh, just making our first significant turn down to the southwest uh, to cross the Bay of Thailand. We've still got about uh, 150, 200 miles to go before we get it back into the open, open water. Uh, we're just passing the southernmost islands of Vietnam right now, which is our first land we've seen for uh, four days, pretty much, since we left Hong Kong. Um, and the weather's easing at the moment. The first two or three days, we uh, pretty much had it on the nose uh, all the way down, 20 to 30 knots, two and a half, maybe peaking at three meter seas. Uh, but the boat's, uh, the boat's done very well. Nothing's come adrift. Uh, but it's nice to be nice to be back into some calmer water. We're about 130 miles east of Ho Chi Minh City right now. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of local fishing boats uh, out at the moment. Not many of them with AIS, which uh, which makes navigation interesting. Um, we're looking forward to getting into Malaysia and uh, tying up there and maybe having a cold beer. After eight days of running, we arrived safely at Rayaz Marina in Kuala Tranganu, Malaysia. This is where we'll meet the owner of the yacht and Dan Streets, the president of Nordhaven, will join us for the remainder of the trip down to Singapore.
After a, a pretty long flight, it was a, a, a connection through Hong Kong and Kuala Lumpur. I arrived on the boat and uh, just uh, was love at first sight. The everything from the the warm tropical Malaysian atmosphere. Uh, the boat was I can only describe it as a happy boat. It was uh, together. It was uh, there were no problems. Uh, there were jokes, the, the crew was competent, uh, and uh, as I got settled in, I knew we were going to have some fun. So it, uh, that evening we all sat up on the flybridge. I got caught up on, on the, the trip down from Hong Kong and how all of that went, the weather and the fun and the jokes and the names, and it was, it was day one of a great trip. Yeah, the next day after my arrival, we uh, launched the uh, shore boat and took a, Duncan took us on a, on a pretty wild Disneyland ride trip up, up the, the river, uh, up and around uh, inland and around, and it, it joined up in a different spot. We came back to the boat, so it was a, a good feel for, for Malaysia uh, and what, what, the, what the population looks like there. And then we, uh, we also made a trip into town. There was just some final provisioning and some food. And uh, again, just uh, really, really enjoyed the people and the local population and the atmosphere of, of what we encountered. It was a, quite an exotic experience. But the next day, the owners arrived. Uh, we were anticipating their arrival, looking forward to it. Uh, Shagun and his lovely wife, uh, Shelley, and Shelley's sister and her husband. So when they arrived, we gave them a tour of the boat and settled in and, and then had a, a christening ceremony. The champagne was broken, the words were said, and, and uh, Kanuna was christened. Not long after that, we departed uh, late in the afternoon and headed out uh, with plans to stop at uh, some islands along the way down to Singapore. During the night, uh, we, we arrived at uh, what I'm going to call island number one, because I can't remember the name of it, uh, and if I did, I probably couldn't pronounce it. Uh, we stayed there until probably about noon that day, uh, fishing, uh, snorkeling, uh, enjoying just life aboard the boat. Uh, the snorkeling was some of the most beautiful I've experienced in, in my life. Just incredible tropical fish all kinds of different corals and colors, and uh, it, it was absolutely fantastic. And when I mentioned this to Shagan, he said, you haven't seen anything yet. I got better stuff to show you. In, in part two of what is probably the best boating day I've ever had in my, my life, we, we moved from island number one over to island number two, dropped anchor there in this beautiful sand, white sandy beach with a, with a coral rim uh, around it just gorgeous palm trees, tropical environment. We sat on the beach, we talked, we, we enjoyed. It was, it was just perfect. The temperature was perfect, probably 80 degrees there. So it was a, just a, a wonderful experience on that lovely, lovely beach. Well, the perfect day continued. We, we lifted anchor again and moved over to what I'll call island number three. Uh, some of us went ashore there. I did. I was dropped off on the beach and uh, explored around and, and just, again, just loved it. Uh, got picked up or signaled to be picked up, came back to the boat, uh, 
and by that time it was late afternoon and that, that evolved into, uh, into early evening and a, a cocktail served on the upper deck uh, with hors d'oeuvres. Uh, we watched the sun go down, the temperature was perfect, the company was perfect. It was just one of those lovely once or twice in a lifetime experiences that you have uh, on a boat. So we, we departed that night after dinner, uh, ran through the night and awoke to find ourselves in the Straits of Singapore, a very, very busy place, ships everywhere you look, uh, dozens and dozens of ships uh, around you. We reached the, the, the point where, where uh, customs and immigration came, came aboard, cleared the boat, uh, cleared us into Singapore and then we made the, the rest of the way uh, up, up the river up to the Raffles Marina which was our, our destination and the completion of our trip. Later that day, we, we had the official handover of Kanuna uh, to uh, the Tia family. Had a, a small cocktail party. Some friends uh, and, and staff of, of the Tahia company came aboard and we had a, a lovely cocktail party and had a, a signing of documents and an official handover of Kanuna to the Tahia family, which, and I knew she was going into good hands and headed off on some great adventures. Well, it's been some months uh, since uh, since we finished that uh, delivery, and I reflect back on on the trip, uh, the, just the great joy that it was. It was it was such a pleasure to be on uh, a, a happy ship. As a project manager, there's there's no better feeling, you know, to actually be delivering a, you know, this dream that people have had, and you know, to see the look on their face and them actually appreciating it, and, and finally being able to use it after the build process. It was good to be reminded of, of the, um, how, how wonderful these boats are out in operation. We spend a lot of our time each day in the nuts and bolts of building boats and the business of building boats and, and that can be left behind where we can enjoy the, the, the pleasure and pure joy of, of being aboard uh, a Nordhaven and I was reminded of that. Uh, and I'm counting the days until I can do it again. <laughs>